from Berkeley to Berkeley. <laughs> That was ominous. <laughs> They're shooting at us already. <laughs> Out. Hi, everybody. Hope you are doing really well. I am with the wonderful, truly exquisite, lovely, so many words that I can't think of right now. <laughs> Sophie. Mm. Hi, Sophie. Hi. Hey, dear. Good. Where are we today? County. Somerset. Yes. You'll understand why that's <laughs> relevant. Oh, my God. It's not <laughs> We are today <laughs> just on the outskirts of Cheddar and we are here to do a starfish decoy site. This is your first ever decoy site, isn't it? Yes. And it's a very special one, by the way. I'm not taking it to any ordinary one. It's our first Somerset decoy site and it's very, very special. I'll explain more as we go along. So we're going to take a look inside and as we take a look inside, I will explain to you why this is so freaking special and the context of this one. So should we explore it? Mm -hmm. Let us. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Full of farmers, huh? instruments. <laughs> yeah. Smells like paint and tarp and everything. I'll, I'll just do this. Here we go. Lots of cobwebs. Okay, so come in. So if you you hold this for me up like this, this will be perfect. So. I um, left handed, so this is quite interesting because I've got stuff here. Uh, no. So, welcome back, everybody. We are in, as was kindly Craig says, we're in Somerset today. Um, this was actually one of the first ever starfish decoy sites that we're standing on right now, as in terms of the ones that we would all relate to. The first thing that stands out with this is this was one of six. That was around here and basically this one was from the 2nd of October 1942 to the 1st of May 1943 short shelf life and it was part of the Burrington series which was basically a group of decoy bunkers as we are here or decoy sites should I say the bunker what we're standing in was part of that to basically simulate night attacks of Bristol and each one had a specific simulation role within Bristol. This one was um, B. So they're all alphabetized, me and my big words. And obviously it was a civil decoy, as you can probably guess, QL1, quick light. Civil decoy, which means obviously it was protecting civilian sites, not military. And, yeah, this was to simulate the West Depot of Bristol's railway system. So, yeah, the control bunker. What you will find very interesting, so if you politely just nab that down there a little bit. These plimps here, everybody. Now, if you're a familiar person or familiar subscriber to my channel, you will spot something very, very unique. That's right. There's three of them. Normally, normally... We only get one, one generator plinth. So these, for everybody who doesn't aren't aware, these are. I'll show you one more time. These are generator plinths. Obviously, these were to power the decoy site for the fires, etc., etc. And the reason why there was three on this one was because something very, very special on this one as well. This was also to do with a Z rocket battery. Z rocket battery, if any of you did or didn't know, was a anti-aircraft system where there were rockets basically placed on plimps, of which there were 13 on this site, and only about five are barely visible. I've not, we might have a look and find them, but they're sort of in the farmstead at the back. Basically, you're just looking at a concrete floor is really all that survives, but they would have been part of a Z rocket battery. So Normally the Home Guard would have eventually taken them over, but really the idea was that they would have used rockets to shoot down bombers. 
which you would have had. So as we know, standard rule of application for decoy sites, um, holes at the top were for ventilation, holes at the bottom, as you can sort of see around that corner and behind Sophie's wonderful little legs, uh, are for basically um, any form of generator or power that we've gone through. If you want a nice little rare bit of history that still survives everybody, thank you Sophie, automatically done. You can see where the um, little spikes are for where the generators would have been placed. Pretty damn cool. So, we know then, if this is the generator, we can only assume that what we're going to go into in a minute is the control part of the bunker and the escape hatch as well. And we'll take you outside and we'll, we'll probably sort of show you that as well. So shall we, if you guide us through, the first thing we need to look at before we've done that, look at the blue door, oh, okay. She had a moment. Uh, there's, a, there's a door frame here, beautiful green one. We just need to look at the original door frame. So not only did this decoy site facilitate the decoy itself, but it also facilitated, yeah, careful, the Z battery as well. So it would have controlled that as well. Up there, as is classic for most of us, is our escape hatch. If I come past yeah. you, so thank you so much. Um, that's our escape hatch. There we go. The ladder rung of the top one is still there. Amazing. Um, really cool. Obviously, as you would have seen, there would have been a ladder here. And this is really... Oh, good job I'm wearing thick boots there, because it's a bit of glass. Um, this would have been the control area. And it also would have been the control area for the Z rocket battery as well. So basically electronical devices and everything else that would have been placed in here would have been to help set off the rockets that would have been placed outside. So actually, I mean, in terms of decoy sites, this is without question one of the most unique ones, not, well, as, as well as the fact that this was one of the first ever decoy sites that's around here. Should we head out, I do believe, if you're happy. No, it's okay. <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll do it. Um, but as history goes, everybody, I mean, this is some of the best out there. The horses have gone, I do believe. Um. Yeah, they have. Right, okay. What we're going to do is, let me just show you something really cool. So, standing behind us, if you ignore, if you ignore the wonderful car, I can point to you, finger of doom, let me just, it's all going wrong here. If I point finger of doom, the other starfish decoy sites were literally on the boundary of that hill. And this is the only one that still stands, well, is the only one, Burrington B, is the only decoy site that stands here on this precipice, which is remarkable. And then, somewhere around this farmstead, which we can't really sort of get into. But if you see any concrete circles, everybody, that's where the Z rockets would have stood as well. So, and they were all scattered. We can't really get round, but they were all scattered beyond that field just round there. And the farmer eventually removed them. And another thing for all you wonderful World War II history lovers out there, yes, you've guessed it. There's a blast shelter there. Now, if you look at old photos of this wonderful place, sadly, when they were redigging it up, there would have been your typical wedge coming down on either side as help for protection coming out like this. So you've got your narrow gap between your blast wall and your entrance. There's a nice little narrow gap that would have been in there and you would have walked in through there. But it is an extremely large, it is the largest decoy site you can have and for very good reason because it had dual, dual purpose. So there you go. Sophie. The wonderful Sophie with her pink converse. <laughs> um, what do you think? Thoughts and feelings? Very, very interesting. It's so interesting. It's, yeah. yeah, the fact that it's the last one remaining of six. six? Well, there's a few. There's six, a couple yeah. that are up on the hill, which yeah. we won't go to today because yeah. it's just very hilly today. <laughs> done enough hills. We've done enough as hills. a recording this. Yeah, we've done um, enough. Yeah, so. Bit interesting, isn't it? Mm, very. I think it just puts into context the fact that. Really, what we're looking at, oh, cool problem with not my face. Uh, it's all just gone wrong now. Uh, what we're looking at is just an incredible piece of World War II history that obviously, for its short shelf life, proved as just a just an interesting asset in terms of Bristol's uh, keeping it going. Really, I mean, the people of Bristol, most most of them probably wouldn't have even known these existed. But the fact that 
these were here just these control shelters obviously the main the main function is obviously you would have had pipes coming out to simulate fires or to simulate the state in lights in this case it was the station but then the fact you've got the Z rocket battery as well so it's you know absolutely incredible very heavily defended and also for a decoy so you imagine the idea is you lure the germans in and then you shoot them out the sky with some rockets so yeah beautiful place though isn't it so yeah. really lovely around here we're in cheddar like i said before um just close to the mendips in fact we've sort of driven through the mendips cheddar gorge as well and it's just it's simply i mean like i said somerset what you know i mean we're in somerset <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's just beautiful everywhere <laughs> so there you go right yeah so there you go thank you Sophie we'll okay. say a proper goodbye in a minute but thank you for coming with me okay. just Sorry. hit me with a torch <laughs> uh, thank you okay. right, we'll catch up in a minute we'll say properly goodbye okay. So everybody, um, you're not going to see this, but trust me when I say this. Finger of Doom, literally there, that's where one of the Z rockets is. Or was. And like I said, there's 13 in this field. And uh, literally would have been aiming up towards the sky. Shooting their rockets. And uh, hopefully hitting their mark. So peaceful now, isn't it, really? Mm. No offence, but we're doing it old school. Um... What was I going to say to you? No, just Somerset just does it for me. Do you know that? Just chills me the frick out. Mm. You know, we've had a really nice day so far. I think so. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to agree. Right. <laughs> it's about three hours in the car on the way back, so she's kind of got to agree for that, that, that period of time. Or it's, uh, after that. After that, <laughs> it's game over. <laughs> Or, God forbid, we stop off at a KFC or a McDonald's on the way just Ooh. to have like a time out. That does sound nice, though. <laughs> I'm really in the mood for that. To be fair. I'm in the mood for something really. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, too much information for all of you out there. We are healthy normally, maybe. Yeah. Right, okay. We'll say goodbyes in a minute. Hello, everybody. I'm so sorry that this video has not been the most professional video you've ever seen in your <laughs> life for multiple reasons. <laughs> I'm probably heavily edited video <laughs> as well, so there might be a lot of stops. The point of important thing was we gave you the date, we gave you as much information. There are, like I said, remnants of other bits of starfish around here, but we can finally say, especially on this channel, it's our first Somerset starfish decoy, and it, more importantly, it's probably one of the first built starfish decoys within this sector. So I did, I, if you rewind, I did give you a lot of information. I did, didn't I? Yeah. Back me up, I did. I gave them all the information they needed. Okay, so, in the more words of Phoenix History, thank you so much, Sophie, for joining me on this wonderful mm -hmm. journey of ours. Um, because history matters, and I think we can just say it bloody well does, don't it, today? Mm -hmm. Bloody well yeah. does, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. I mean, not too bad, <laughs> when you think about it. Uh, thank you for coming along with me. You are just amazing for supporting me on this one for today. It's brilliant. Um, We've done the biggest history man. I will see y'all. We will see y'all very soon. Take care, everybody. And uh, yeah, ready? Mm -hmm. Kapow. Oh, careful. She went. <laughs>